Hey everyone. In this video, video number two, I want to take you through the remediation project that I'm working on, the decisions I've made, the actions I'm taking, and the overall cost. So to give you a view of what's happening and what I'm trying to get done. So let's show you the problem statement. Overall, when you look at the diagram, and this is a rough diagram of how my crawl space is laid out. Obviously, you can see the front yard on the right, backyard on the, the left, uh, the yard slopes from the back down toward the front, and I'll show you a picture of that. What you'll see is a couple of different elements in here where I've come in and identified, for example, the relative humidity, the wood moisture, right, as you go back and look at the di different areas. The ones in red are the ones that I started measuring on day one, and you can see in zone one that I started measuring a relative humidity of 74% and the wood moisture around 15%. You can also see in this area that I have a challenge with wet soil, and I'll show you some pictures of that area as well. What was interesting is I thought that the wet soil would drive the relative humidity for this area much higher than it is. In reality, the highest relative humidity was 80% in zone two. Now. I went back and looked at some of the quotes that I'd gotten back from the different vendors. And when I did that, I noticed that the items in blue were the ones that had been done by Terminex, taking a look at the wood moisture, and they had identified a couple of hot spots, obviously more toward the center as you go back in and look at this. So I'd already started my measurements without their data, but then took a look at it from there. You'll also see that my cross space door is on this side of the house and that'll help to orient as you go from there versus looking at the deck on the back left. So I've got wood moisture that's greater than 15%. So anything in that area is starting to get in dangerous and obviously 20% is very wet and is a prime candidate for getting mold from everything that I've read. My bigger concern initially had been the wet soil area, but what really uh, caused the problems is there was an area in this spot which was the drainage from my air conditioner in my attic area or the upstairs area that had drained down through the house into the crawl space and then was going out and coming out underneath the deck. And that was when I noticed that in this general area, I was running into and seeing water just laying on top of the vapor barrier, right? And so I wouldn't expect to see that because one, I have this open bay area over on the side and then this area is the stoop for the front steps coming into the house. So there's no reason for water to be gathering on this side. So at that point, I knew that I needed to take and get that updated quote from a termite company, from another vendor, a two or three vendors. I always like to get a minimum of three, preferably four. So let's walk through and I'll show you what I ran into, what I was seeing and what I've been doing. So as I went through and started getting the quotes, one of the vendors came back and said, listen, we'll put in a vapor barrier and you can get that for about 1400. But if we put in a sump pump and no details to go along with it, it gets you up around $6,000. So this was before any additional cost, any additional labor that might get into when they start looking at it. Uh, it was no encapsulation. It was just putting down a vapor barrier. Now, as I've looked at 10 mil vapor barrier, and tried to put out the square footage, which is about 2,000, 2,200 square foot under my house, roughly. Didn't measure it exactly, I just did some rough estimates. I couldn't buy 10 mil vapor barrier off of a website cheaper than the $1,400 that they had quoted to come back in. So that caused some bells to go off. Are they gonna put back down six mil or less vapor barrier and just put it back in similar to what I have? And I'll show you pictures of what that looks like. Vendor B came in, did a good job, thorough test, took some pictures, uh, had identified, as I mentioned in video one, there was a particular area uh, where I had some water that had leaked at one point from a refrigerator, a drain pipe or a, a water line had gone and broken at one point, uh, and that had gotten down in the floor. And so in doing that, uh, some mold, I think, has grown in that general area. Uh, vendor B came in and had four predefined quotes already printed and ready to go when they showed up. So it really didn't matter the size of my house. They had a solution and they were going to sell the solution. Um, they didn't measure at the end of the visit. Super nice guy. Uh, and theirs ranged from a low end quote around $10,000 for encapsulation 
and a dehumidifier. And then when you started adding in the sump pump, a warranty, they're guaranteed to come back every year, all these other pieces, it ranged in the four quotes between $10,000 and $15,000. Vendor C was another vendor that I'd mentioned. Great website, lots and lots of testimonials of how they have solved customers' problems. Uh, and I knew I'd seen quotes from people that their solution was going to be at least $20,000. Kind of find out one of my neighbors had them visit and had gotten a $20,000 plus on the low end for them to come in and do the encapsulation, put in the dehumidifier, a sump pump, build the warranty, and cover the other pieces. So my choices now are, do I hire one of these vendors and which one is right? Uh, two are promoting encapsulation. Uh, a third one that I wanted to potentially look at does encapsulation. And everything that I was reading was kind of leading me down that path. So my question for myself, if I did it myself, is do I really want to spend 6000 which I'm thinking probably is lower end equipment, a 6 mil vapor barrier instead of a 10 mil vapor barrier? Uh, is it going to be like what I've got to now and I'm going to have to replace it again down the road? And I'm worried is 6000 not enough. So then I'm looking at the 10000 and up, and do I really want to spend $10,000? So there's got to be a better way. So I started putting together my checklist. What are the things I need to look at? Vapor barrier. And do I just do a vapor barrier around the edges, like I have now, and replace what's there old and falling apart and letting moisture come through? Uh, or do I come back and cover the entire uh, floor in the crawl space? but not encapsulate? Or do I go down the path of encapsulation where I'm taking the vapor barrier, I'm sealing everything and taking it up the sides of the walls inside the crawl space, and then taking it down that path of sealing off the crawl space. I knew there was a good chance I needed a dehumidifier. With a dehumidifier, you're gonna need a condensate pump to take the water from the dehumidifier out and move it outside the house. Then it got into the debate of closed versus open. And as I mentioned in the previous video, my dad is like, don't close your vent. It's bad for you. It's going to cause all kinds of mold problems. And then vent fans. If I do close them, do I need a vent fan? Not need a vent fan. Most people are telling me, no, you don't need one. Others are saying you need to get rid of soil gases. So you need a vent fan to expel your soil gases if you're going to follow code. Uh, I'd have another guy that's uh, somebody who's worked with heating and air systems. And he's like, vapor barrier around the outside. You don't need any inside. You want some of that moisture to come out from the center, the dehumidifier, and a sump pump if you need it will be all you need. Maybe you put down an additional vapor barrier. So that then leads into the sump pump. Do I need a sump pump? Do I have enough water collecting? Because only rarely after a very heavy rain have I ever seen water puddle in that area, but it is very moist. And I'll show you that shortly. And if you put in the sump pump, sump pump then I'm going to need the interior French drain. So do I really want to do all the work? to come in and dig an interior trench along the footers, put in the French drain and all the gravel that's going to need to come around it. And then do you put a sock around it or you not put a sock around the French drain? So that was my decisions I was going through. So at the end of the day, I finally decided, you know what? I think that I can start doing some of the basics, put it in place, not spend all this extra money and just start small and then see if I can solve part of the problems. And if it gets to be too much, I'll go back and hire the professionals. And I'd looked at lots of stuff on YouTube, lots of different vendors. Uh, one of the ones that I found some of the best information from was Cross Space Ninja. So go take out, check out his YouTube channel and check out his webpage. I think it's crawlspaceninja.com. Lots of videos about what to do, when to do it, and answers all those different questions. So let's get into it. So this is my front of the house. Uh, and this is the, the side and the crawl space door, obviously on the side coming in. And so I'll show you this outside portion and then I'll come back to this in a minute, but I wanted you to kind of get a feel. And what you're gonna end up seeing is I lay out the different zones. Uh, this side of the house from here over through in this side is zone one. So you'll, you saw that in my diagram earlier. And so I'll take that and bring that back so you can see. So let's take a look at zone one. So on the inside, and at this point, I, when I took this picture, I've already done a little bit of the work, but you can see the crawl space uh, door is off to my right. And you can see that the water over time, there's lots of dirt and mud that is collected in this area. It's beaten up um, where I've walked on it and I've actually stored some additional equipment on the inside. Um, also, part of the equipment that I've bought, 
you can see my, my meters over here on the side as well as some of the insulation that I was going to look at as a potential of sealing up my vents. So in zone one, uh, if you look at the bottom edge, you'll notice down in these different areas the white line where you see humidity that has been seeping in. You know, I'll come back to the outside so you can see where that is, but more than likely this is the edge of the flower bed on the outside and you can then see the water that has seeped in up underneath in this area. Now if I take a closer picture, you can see that this is dark and it's been probably some mold and mildew in it and there are actually two little spots in here where I poked my finger down into the mud because it's not hard, it's soft and you can see the, the dirt that is caked along the brick up at the top over time. Now if I, and that was where I just walked straight ahead in that first picture, if I take a look to the left you can see my area where all the water has been collecting up along the side of this wall and you can definitely see the water that is seeping back in through that side. Just another closer view where you can see the area where water is coming in and now I've got to decide do I just seal it up with a vapor barrier? Um, do I go on the outside and try to seal the wall from the outside? So I've got some decisions I need to make. But at the end of the day, I wanted to look at these pieces and see what else I needed to do. So let's go back inside and you can see that this area coming at the bottom of the bed uh, probably is slightly higher than the area on the water where the water was coming in. Uh, and this is just dirt that has come up from rains on the side where uh, I had cut my grass too low, let the grass die off, and so that stained the side a little bit. So that gives you a view from the inside and the outside. Now this is zone two, so when I come in the crawl space and I move straight forward towards zone two, this is the area for the front porch that I mentioned, and this is where I was seeing water that was just collecting. So it could be coming out from the ductwork that's over top, or some of the other areas. So when you see my measurements from zone two, I literally will be kneeling and taking measurements in the area that I've highlighted. Uh, a lot of times I'm taking the humidity in, in the zone on this side and sometimes I go in between these pillars to look to see how to take and to look at those measurements. And you can see a little bit of the insulation has drooped over time, but as you look at the, uh, the beams, there's not much in the way of mold that's showing up in the beams in that area. I went a little bit further straight ahead in zone two and looked to my right and so this is the bay window and this is how the vapor barrier was laid out. In this particular instance, you see the vapor barrier, but obviously there are areas that are not covered at all with the vapor barrier and just open for that coming in. Now there is water going to a spigot on the outside in that particular instance, and so that gives you a better view there. Now I'm gonna flip and turn back the opposite direction and look to the back of the house. So to the left goes to, to zone one, straight ahead goes out to the back, and you can see a vent here, and there's another vent there. Those are underneath my deck. So that gives you a view of where we are and this is the area that was hitting an 80 percent relative humidity. Slightly closer to the ground from the the beams to the floor than it is in zone one uh, but still not too bad. I'm on my knees at this point just looking down and through the house so I've got plenty of room to move around. But to give you a view of the outside this is my deck and so I think this is part of my problem. Those vents are underneath this deck and when I've measured this this is all of about 22 to 24 inches above the ground to the bottom of uh, the beam. And so there's very little airflow that is most likely getting underneath the deck and getting into the inside of the house. So what did I do and what were my steps? So the first thing I went through and did was purchase meters. And I'll show you pictures of those and I'll have uh, descriptions and links to Amazon of the ones that I purchased. They're pretty good. They're not high end. And I'm okay with a meter that is off two, three, four, maybe even five percent humidity, knowing that it's going to be pretty close, but it doesn't have to be exact. I just need to get down to different areas. I went through and started doing measurements for my baseline. And my number one priority was listening a lot to different folks, and I heard it from multiple vendors, but also especially from the Cross Space Ninja, just decrease your humidity. Start solving the root problem, then address anything else that needs to get done. So the first thing I did is I went in and closed vents. So in the pictures you had before and some others show you, I went ahead and closed the vents. I've installed a dehumidifier and a condensate pump. 
Now I put it in a temporary location because I wasn't sure where the best place was to go. I'll show you where I put it and I'll show you pictures of it. I'll probably move it a little bit later on because it's actually not far off from where my bedroom is. And even though when I'm under there, the fan is fairly quiet, there is a bit of a hum that comes from the condensation pump and the, the pieces in the dehumidifier as it's getting that water, cooling it down and getting it out. Um, so anyway, I'll probably move that over time and you'll see in my pictures that I've got some drop cores just running from an outlet over to that location because I didn't want to pull power until I knew it was going to be the permanent location. I also installed vent fans and I put a power outlet next to the vent fan so that wasn't there before. So those are the steps I've done at this point and I'll show you the results of what has happened to the relative humidity, what has happened with the wood moisture measurements, and then I'm looking at what are my next steps. Do I need to seal the vents? Um, do I need to go back and replace the vapor barrier? Probably. Do I just replace the vapor barrier or do I go to full encapsulation? So I'm going to do this step by step, record videos on it so that you can actually see what I've done and where I'm going. And at the end of the day, I've also got the wet space in zone one and I've got to decide how to solve that problem. I'm not 100% sure if the water is mainly coming through that wall from um, the flower bed or if it's rain that's seeping in through a blowing rain through the crawl space door itself. So I've got to find the root cause and that'll let me know if I need to go in and put in the French drains on the inside, put in a sump pump, or do I need to go down the path of doing a wall sealant. So that's where I am at this point. So if you go back and look at my space again, you can see that I put the, the dehumidifier uh, closer to this side of the house, toward the middle. It may be a little bit more toward the front than it is toward the back. And then after I sealed the vents, a couple of days later, I installed the exhaust vent fan or the vent exhaust fan. Uh, and I bought one that runs about 240, I think, cubic feet per second. And so it's probably more than I need, but I've set the uh, the measurements on it so that when the humidity gets above for the probe 55% the fan kicks on when it drops below 55% the fan stays off uh, The dehumidifier though in lowering the moisture in the space has been running constantly And my intent is because it is set at 55% humidity as well The intent is to dry the space out enough so that the dehumidifier only runs when it needs to run now is that going to happen as is without additional vapor barrier or if I need to encapsulate the space? Well, time will tell and I'll show you what I'm doing as I get to those different spaces. So let's jump in and I'll show you the two meters. So I'll put the links to these, but this is the meter that I'm using for relative humidity and temperature and it does a pretty good job. Uh, not great, but does a good job. This general is one that I'm using that comes in and measures the wood moisture. You take the top off when you take the top off, there are two pins that I simply stick into the wood and it then gives me the wood measurements. And I'll use that in multiple different locations to make sure I get an average in the area. So let's talk about my vents. So if you look at the vents, there's a little, um, a little tab, a little lever that you can pull. So I was able to lift that up and pull it toward me and then push this down and it locks in place. And so when you do that, it looks like from the outside that it pretty much has sealed up the vents. And if you look at it at night, you can't tell that there's anything in there, maybe a little chance of air coming through. But if you look at it during the daytime, you can obviously see that there's lots of areas where air can come in. So my estimate, it stops 90% of the air coming in, but it doesn't stop the 10%. So air is still coming from the outside into the inside of the house. So when you come and look at the dehumidifier, I installed the April, April Air 1830. I went ahead and put on um, the sleeve that's used more for connecting to the HVAC systems. Probably don't need it. Probably going to take it off, but it's four simple screws to take those off in the corners. And then once you take those off, then it's just open and you can see the vent that is there on the inside. Uh, I'll open that up. I left it in there just in case it's turned off. I didn't want you know, a mouse or something else crawling up on the inside of it, but we'll see how it goes from now. And as I mentioned, here's my drop cord coming over to feed the condensate pump and to feed this line. Now my condensate line, I didn't have it tacked up well. It comes up and goes to a loop and then should have gone straight over, but it dropped down. So I need to go and uh, get some straps tied up for now. 
Again, this was a temporary location, so I didn't do a whole lot to get started. But I did use the legs on these blocks to one, get the dehumidifier off the ground, to then level it so that it was level, and then it would pour uh, back into the condensate pump to take the water out. So you can't see it well, but again, I've got the I've got a loop built in for the uh, water coming from the condensate pump to make sure that it you know is like a pee trap uh, that you would have in your bathroom. <coughs> Excuse me, and so that keeps the water from back flowing the other direction. Now this is the flip side. Uh, the, the dehumidifier came with the, the pieces that covers um, and would connect to your HVAC duct system. Again, probably not needed. The airflow is going this direction. So since the majority of my moisture at the 80% was on this side and this side over where this old lawn equipment it's just sitting there and has been for a couple of years. I need to get rid of it. With 74%, I wanted to set it up so that it would pull the humidity from the highest risk area in through and then point it to the least risky area. And here's my up to the top on the side is the crawl space door uh, with the outlet that's over near that. I bought the condensate pump on Amazon and the one extra piece I had to buy from Home Depot that I didn't think about because I thought it would come with the unit was just this extra um, three quarter inch by one inch uh, pipe that then simply goes into you you take the one of these white covers off on the condensate pump you take the pipe and just put it into the condensate pump and just let it naturally drain um, I need a better setup probably to take it the dehumidifier higher and have the condensate pump itself sitting on a brick which is why I brought this initial one in I just haven't, again, put it up there yet, but I want the condensate pump to be lower than a dehumidifier so that the water flows down and into the condensate pump. I also bought some uh, little um, tablets that you put down in the water to, to keep mold and uh, mildew and other elements from, from growing inside of the condensate pump and then getting into the line and clogging up this line as it's trying to push the air or the condensation out. So the other thing that I'd put in is I took the, the little plastic vent cover off of one of my vents um, and then I put in this vent fan and what I've done is I, I have the 55 here of what it should be as my trigger. Uh, 66 is showing as this one was the humidity at the time when I took the picture so the fans are running. And the center shows you that it's 79 degrees in this space. So part of the reason for the heat uh, on that side is the the heat coming out of the dehumidifier blowing back into this area right is actually heating up the space and that's part of the reason that I believe I'm getting warmer temperatures on this side when I take the measurements and I'm usually taking my temperature measurements there in zone one but it also shows up on that exhaust fan so as you look at all those pieces this is what I've spent to date uh, the first meter for relative humidity was about $29 the second one to measure the moisture with the pins was another $25. On Amazon, the April Air 1820 was, I think, $1,020, $1,010. I don't remember exactly when I went back and, and bought this one with taxes. Uh, it was, and ended up just at $1,100 to get the dehumidifier. The condensate pump was $62. Uh, this is the, the tabs that I put in. It gives me, uh, I think it's, six tabs for nine dollars you put a new tab in every uh, two months to make sure that the you minimize the mildew and other elements inside the condensate pump um, the ventilator fan i actually bought um, two of those so that was 233 I only put one in but i bought two just in case i needed another one so right now i've just put one in to see how that would fit um, i bought three large pieces of the r10 um, insulation, foam insulation at Home Depot. So that was another $90. Uh, and then I bought some great stuff to look at and see if I was, was going to use that to seal it up. So, so far, instead of spending minimum $6,000 up to $20,000, I've spent $1,570 roughly. Um, I may have missed a piece or two there, but we just wanted to give you a guide of starting this process and testing things out how much I've spent. So looking at spending that kind of money, let's talk about the results. So I've broken this out into zone one and zone two, with zone two being the gray. And I've also, for 
measurement put outside relative humidity. Now, what I had found is prior to putting in the dehumidifier and the vent fans is that whatever the relative humidity was outside, that's what it was going to be under my house. So there were days that I measured and if it was 74% humidity outside, it was 74 in the crawl space. If it had 85 outside, it was 85 in the crawl space. There was one day, it was a nice cool day, got on 56% humidity and it was 56% humidity in the crawl space. Well, obviously I wanted that to stay below 60% over time. So this is the point on July 3rd when I put in the dehumidifier. You could see in zone one, that I was running at about 74% humidity. Zone two was up around the 80%. And then as I went through a couple of days, additional measurements stayed a little bit lower on zone one, right? As you're going through and the outside uh, was 74. So it was still pretty close, but that could be just the difference in the meter itself. And so I said, now let's start the dehumidifier. It took all of about an hour, hour and a half to unbox it get it underneath and set up. Uh, and so then so let's try and see what happens. So I waited a couple of days before I started measurements again, unfortunately, but notice there was a huge difference that outside that day it was 54% humidity and it was down to 62 inside and 68. So going from 80 to 68, right, on zone two was a huge improvement. And from 74 to 62 was a huge improvement, right? So then I said, well, let's set it a couple of days. Uh, I received and, and got in the mail the vent fan on the 8th, but I didn't put it in because I wanted to see what was happening a little bit longer. Uh, plus, I needed to put in a power outlet so that I would have power. So I came back and waited and actually had the next day a good rain. And outside, you see that it hit 88% humidity. Now, this is where I came in and I decided, well, let's put in the vent fan. And that day, I opened the door and had some of the vents open and so it got to a much higher humidity in zone two not nearly as much as zone one not sure exactly why so i guess it's just the air coming through um, and i said well let's put the vent fan in so now i have two things i have the dehumidifier that i installed here i have the vent fan that i installed there and up to this point i've just left those two running i haven't done much of anything else except for one minor test and now you can see that there is a steady decline of the relative humidity slowly bit by bit coming down. Not as fast as I would like, but it is a steady progress over about a week, week and a half period, right? So let's switch from humidity to wood moisture. So when I looked at the wood moisture on day one, uh, when I put in the dehumidifier, because this is when I first started uh, measuring the, the wood moisture in the beams, I was at about 14 to 15%. And this probably should be 15 here on zone one. It depends on which day and, and which beams I was looking at. But I was ranging between 19.5 to 20.5 for different beams in zone two. So roughly about 20%. So dehumidifier here and then the vent fan here. And you can see that it's been just a slow, steady decrease of those. And so 12.5 to 13% is a great range for the moisture of the wood. And keep in mind, this is the wet area in zone one and the, the beams literally five, six feet away from that wet moist area are in the 13 to 12 and a half percent range. What is even better is I've gone from that 19 to 20% all the way down and it varies a little bit from day to day, running about uh, 15 and a half to 16%. I, some beams I can plug into and I'll see 14%. Other beams I'll plug into is 16%. And so I'm going with the higher numbers and showing 16 because those are my problem areas and I wanted to focus on the more problematic areas and beams and it actually changes a little bit from day to day. So what are my next steps? So now that I've been letting these run for a little while and I'm getting good progress, obviously, for the measurements of the decrease of this coming in, um, I did a quick test. So I cut this particular piece of uh, foam insulation into a piece that is 16 and most of the time you'll see this is 8 but I found that I had to cut mine to 7.5 inches to fill in the space. So I can push it in and it won't stay because there's mortar down around the areas holding that vent fan in. So I came back with just some 
and you can get it at any of the Home Depots or Lowe's, some great stuff foam insulation. And then I'm able to come in and seal around the outside. So when I first sealed this one night, um, I went back and thought I had done a good job and then came back the next day and found in this particular area that there was still some open space around the brick. And you can actually see here too that I, instead of having a center brick wall, I actually have center blocks for uh, the, the support, but bricks just as the outside wall. And I could literally see through the brick wall in this spot. So I simply put some of these spray foam insulation in there and sealed up that particular spot. So this will be my next step. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it this weekend or I'm going to let it go through a little bit longer, see how much better the results get in the wood moisture and dropping it down. Uh, I want to get everything over here, um, obviously down below, probably about 14% was what I would like to see. We'll see how realistic that is, but this will be my next step. So again, I've closed the vents and I've just used the ones that were there. I put in dehumidifier, I put in the vent fan, and I haven't touched anything else. So now I'm looking at sealing the vents and I want to measure the impact and the difference there. And then if that's good, I'll decide what I'm going to do with the vapor barrier. If that's not good enough and I'm not getting the results dropping back down, then one of my next steps is most likely will be to come in and look to see if I want to do a full encapsulation or do I deal with the, the wet area and the water getting in either through the crawl space door or coming in through the flower bed. Not sure, but I'll check on this. So this is my path up to this point. Hopefully all this makes sense to you and is worthwhile for you. So whether I'm doing it right or wrong, this is my test and I'm trying to measure to see the results. So if this is good, give me a thumbs up. Let me know if you have comments, if I should be doing something better, put a comment in saying consider X and consider Y, and then I'll take a look at those. And when I get a chance, I'll try and respond to them. So thanks for listening, and I hope this helps you out.